have you been to Brazil recently? No, I haven't. I wish I could say that I have, but I haven't. Um, but we we are doing a South American tour in uh, most likely September, early September, something like that. We're going to do a Soul Flight tour in the U.S. and go and do Australia and South America, places we've never gone to before. Last time we spoke, you know, we spoke about going to different countries that we definitely should be having concerts at, and uh, we're finally going to get to do it. Yeah. We just played in Mexico City, yeah, that's, that's what which I was, you know, interesting, but we haven't been to Brazil yet, but it was the first Central American, South American show that we did, and it was amazing. Was it, was it feel like coming home? For, for, I mean, Central America, for you, for you kind of... Well, yeah, it definitely Latin, felt... Latin America feel? <coughs> it definitely felt natural. You know, I speak Spanish, so it felt um, comfortable. You know, I was very comfortable in the atmosphere. Wasn't, um, you know, afraid. A lot of people say, oh, when you travel to different cities, you know, you got to be careful for this and that. But I felt at home. You know, I can't wait to, to go to Brazil. Yeah. And then, because last time we also spoke that, that you, maybe you want to... I'm just, excuse me, I'm bothering my tech for a light. I need a lighter. Let me borrow your lighter, Ted. Just for a second. That's Ted. He's Hi. cool. Can I say, have the lyrics, uh, because we spoke last time about the lyrics. Um, have they um, had some good effect now on you? Seeing them every night and just to have them put out on on record. What has been the let's say the the reception of them? Um, <coughs> one of the cool things is that a lot of the fans highly relate to the songs that I highly relate to. Which, which are? Like Unframed, you know. Um, How can I live? Damn, I hate you. So, it's cool that the fans dig the songs that you know where I really feel like I'm throwing my completely, 100% my soul into it. And it's the reception has been great. I think that lyrically, I always mu lyrically and musically, I would like to say that you know I try to stay on the cutting edge of music, like always something a little bit different or. Um, a little bit more creative than what somebody would think. So, on the next record, you know, like I said before, it'll probably be something completely different. I don't know what, I don't know what I've, what concept I'm going to wind up choosing. But there's a couple concepts that I'm tossing around as far as lyrical uh, concepts for the next record. Um. L like, lyrically, I just want to take it to the next level on the next record. Not so much, you know, use my life, I guess, as an example of certain stuff, but, you know, um, and I want to indulge more into the darker side of the mind, you know? The darker side of the mind. The what? Not so much the real side of the mind. This record was very real. Next record, maybe I'll just, you know, resorted to the things that you would think about that are really fucked up, but you would never say. Which is what I did on this record, but I want to just try to, on a couple songs, try to take the focus off me and place my focus on something else and write lyrically about that and see how that works, you know? Just try different things. And I, how hard is it now for you to sing uh, those personal songs you've written? Is it hard to every every evening or every let's say every show to pour your heart out, your heart out again? Is, is it hard or is it easy to do? No, I think that <coughs> you learn how to separate um, your emotions when you're on stage. 
At least I tried to learn how to separate my emotions, you know. I know there's some singers that can't do it, but I realized one thing. There's people that pay money to come see a show. You know, it is a performance, so you have to try to concentrate on your performance as much as you can, whether it's musically or the theatric of your performance and, you know, how you express yourself, body language. Um, so, you know... I know where to draw the line and say, no, I'm not going to fucking start crying on stage. I'm not, you know. These are lyrics that I wrote about some shit that's deep, you know. But I'm here up on stage and these are the fans. And did you have this to is what's going on. on. Did you have to learn it all over the summer? That's gonna you know what? You. You, the, the times that, that you know, bring me the most uh, pain or, or reaction are when I listen to the songs the first time back after we record them and I get to hear them and I listen to myself and what I'm saying in the music you know that's when it hits it's like boom that's you your shit but on stage it's a little bit different man I realize that there's an audience there and I try to put on you know a decent show I want to try to sound good for the fans and and represent El Nino the right way so try to draw the line. No, I'm not gonna fucking... <sighs> and what is then for you, because you're saying fans can really relate to songs that uh, you re relate most to, what is then, let's say, from one fan, some kind of uh, the best thing you heard from him? What has done it to him? <coughs> um... All sorts of different things, man. Every, like, well, I mean, a lot of people re relate to the song With You a lot from the first record. And we actually played that song a couple times in the U.S. for the first time ever. And it was amazing to play it. But one of the, you know, most recent stories is um, we were doing a record signing or something like that. And some girl said that, she was there with her boyfriend and she said we lost our virginity together to your song with you and I was like wow that's fucking amazing cheers to you that you were there when it happened that's crazy yeah. um well and I was wondering because you, well, you wrote really personal about your mom and dad mm -hmm. um, how did they take it yeah that was <coughs> well my mom well my mom took it like this you know, uh, is there something we need to talk about, you know, are you okay, you know, is there anything that I, you need an explanation for, or whatever, whatever, and, and me and my mom have a pretty good relationship, so I didn't feel the need but did you tell for her? any explanation, she knows, no, I don't need I to mean, tell her. Did you, did you tell her beforehand, or after, after the recording, before you wrote the lyric, or after when? No, I, I didn't tell her before I wrote the lyric. That's something that, you know, I didn't have the intentions of. It came out how it came out. So, you know, she just felt like she felt like like she needed to clear up some things. But I'm a grown up. I'm an adult. I don't need an explanation. I am where I am. <coughs> you know, I I. I thank my lucky stars and I thank God that I get to do what I do and that's all that matters. You know, my mother is my mother and my father is my father. I didn't, ex I didn't need an explanation from her. Uh, well, you but, know, well, there might have been negative... Offended by it? That you, let's say, maybe she was saying, well, this is really... Broken. No, but because uh, I was explaining feelings that I felt then, you know. I was basically, you know... On the first record, I dealt and dabbled with a lot of um, subconscious feelings. On the second record, I kind of just told the story of the reasons why I thought like that. And, you know, those stories don't necessarily, didn't necessarily mean um, that's how I feel now. Even in one of the songs I explain, you know, it's a story of when I was 19 years old and just being naive and ignorant and stupid, making stupid decisions and didn't understand what the fuck was going on and how it, 
I wound up being the person that I am, fucked up or not, I am who I am. And all I can do is just try to be a good person. And, uh, I don't think I'm that fucked up, so things happen for a reason, and here I am. And then, well, thing everybody wants to know, have you met your dad already? No, I haven't. But, obviously, we're booking shows in Brazil, so I'm going to. But have you, have you been in contact with him <coughs> since the release of the album? Um, Do you know what he thinks no, about but him? I'm sure he. I'm sure he's got a copy of it. He hasn't contacted, you know, my family in the U.S. at all, as far as you know him having something to say about anything. But obviously, when I go to Brazil, I'm gonna make a conscious effort to definitely get in touch with him and say, you know, hey, you gotta come out and, you know, I am a product of you. But he still, he still, uh, you still know where... Uh, which are, which is my friend's band, actually. Sorry? No, just... No, but you still, uh, I mean, you know where he is now, what his whereabouts are. How, how, how do you know where he is? Did you stay in contact with some other I people? would have, no, it's, okay. my, my mother would know how to find oh, him. Oh, she, she knows. Through it. friends. Okay. To which is something that friend, I never... With your friends. Yeah, which okay. is something that I would, I never knew of until I was, you know... An adult, 2021, you know, I didn't know that she could get in contact with my father when I was 16, 17, 10, 8, 9 years old. So. Did you, okay. Did you, did you talk about him a lot then or not? Or was it something that, well, that was important to you? Yeah, we discussed it. Like, I brought it up. But, um, I don't know. I feel like it's something that I kind of already dragged around for a little while and you know the the story that I can get from one person is only one sided so I haven't yet gone to anyone else and asked them hey what really happened let me get your side of the story and I will you know and that time will come I should ask my grandmother right she'd be like grandma what really happened I don't know if she would give me the right answers because she's a little bit biased. You know, she's my grandma. And and she's a biased grandma. And uh, you don't know your grandma from your from, from your dad's side. No. Okay. Thank you for this. Oh no, you're welcome, man.